And welcome again to Cottage Talk. I am Russ Goldman. This is part of our special series about the transfer window. It's Monday. We're a little bit over 24 hours, a couple more hours than that, probably about 26 hours to go of the transfer window. And I do have some updates that I'll be sharing on this transfer window special for about 15 to 20 minutes. Also want to mention on deadline day, I will be having a live show. I look forward to bringing that to you. We'll talk about the latest in transfer speculation. Hopefully by then, a couple of foam signings, maybe some players leaving. Hopefully we'll have some more information to share. I think we should as we get closer to the end of the window. And uh, I will be sharing that show on Tuesday. Also, I'll be looking back at the window, the summer transfer window, and asking the question of the Fulham signings from this summer, hits or misses. We're going to go through each and every one, and I'll be asking everyone, is it a hit or is it a miss? And there are several to go through. I think most of them are obvious, but we'll talk about it. Are they a hit or are they a miss? But let's get to the latest in transfer speculation, but I do have to do one thing before we go on to start the show. As always, please do subscribe on YouTube and Apple Podcasts. It does help other film supporters find us. We are getting a lot of people signing up to the YouTube channel. I just want to say thank you. We really appreciate it. It helps build up that YouTube channel. So thank you very much for that. Okay, let's get to the latest and greatest. And again, this might not be completely up to date, so let's keep this in consideration that right now when I'm doing this show, it's a roughly about 8.30 UK time, 8.30 PM. So things can change fairly rapidly. So let's start here. Let's talk about what broke this morning. This was from Fabrizio Romano, and it deals with Sasa Lukic. And according to him on Twitter, Sasa Lukic has just signed contracts as new foam player, permanent move completed from Torino after medicals on 10 million fee. Okay. So that is from Fabrizio Romano. I've also seen pictures of him going to the airport, hopefully heading to London and becoming officially a foam player. This is fantastic news. A Serbian central midfielder to play with Mitro. I think this is fantastic. Everything that I've seen and heard from him, this might end up being a steal for foam, the amount of money that they're paying for this. So for me, this is a huge signing in some ways you might be able to call this an upgrade. Maybe it is. Maybe it's an upgrade over Harris. We'll see how he fits into Fulham's system, but I think this is a positive move for the future. So maybe this isn't just about in the future, but maybe it's also about the here and now. Maybe it's about a push for Europe. Who knows? So that is the first bit of news, and this is very positive news. Hopefully, By the time I do the show on Tuesday, we have a signing officially. But this looks like it's good to go. But as I've learned so many times with Fulham, until they make it official, it's not official. So I think this looks good. And I think this would be a positive, extremely positive signing for Fulham. So this is good news. So we're going to start off on a positive. So let's go to the other side because we're going to focus a lot on central midfielders. So this is from Peter Rutzler in The Athletic. And this is a a saga that continues to go on in regards to Nathaniel Chalba. Talks with West Brom progressively, positively towards agreement. Permanent move. This is according to Peter Rutzler. So I think this would be good for the player. I'm talking about Nathaniel Chalba. It just hadn't worked out for him at home. I think to move on to a club like West Brom makes sense just basically restart his career. I think this is good for him. It's good for Fulham. It's good all the way around. I actually think it'll also be good for West Brom. So as I said on a prior show, I think this is a win for everyone involved. So let's hope this goes through for Nathaniel Chalaba. I wish him the best of luck. I have no bad things to say about him. I know what happened in the Newcastle United match. I, I'm aware of that. But I actually wanted to see him play a little bit more. But Obviously, uh, he wasn't trusted to play more for Fulham this season. And uh, I think this is uh, what's coming out of it. It looks like possibly he's moving on to West Brom. We're going to have to follow this. And thank you to Peter Rutzler for uh, updating us on that. Okay. 
So now let's move to a story that actually broke a while ago. So I want to say 18 or 19 hours ago. And this is something worth following. And uh, this speculation keeps changing. So by the time I do the show, I'm sure it will change again. Like I said, this speculation really got going from Mike McGrath in the Telegraph when he posted this tweet about 18 or 19 hours ago. Here it is. Fulmer close to agreeing a deal for Norway midfielder Sander Birch from Sunderland following talks over the weekend. Now, Sander Birch is a well-thought-of central midfielder. Now, here's the thing, and I, I've seen Fulham supporters thinking, well, if they got Lukic, why would they go after another one? I actually think they're not linked, meaning I think that they are potentially going after both. So for me, I would love to see them bring in more central midfield help. He could potentially play that number 10 role. He could play the number eight role, maybe even back up Pauline. I think he has the ability to play all three. I could be wrong on that. But he, as I've said, when he came to Sheffield United, it was a big deal and uh, I, biggest signing ever for Sheffield United. They need the money. And uh, there's been all speculation that Newcastle United were hot and heavy for him. Now I see speculation that they're not involved anymore. There are other clubs involved. And uh, let's see where this takes us. And um, I would like to see Fulham bring in multiple central midfielders. So I'm all for this. Let's see if they can get it down over the line. It's a fluid situation. There are some big clubs that have been involved if you go by the speculation. So we'll see. Based on what I've been seeing, Fulham have been aggressive with this. So it, I think it's a player Fulham might really want to go along with Lukic. So let's just throw that out there to go along with Paulinho, Reed, and then Pereira. Why not? Why not bring in more reinforcements? in central midfield. I'm all for this. So let's see if this becomes a reality. I'll say it again. I don't think that because they got Lukic that they're not going to continue to go after Sander Burge. I could be wrong on this, but I think Fulham are going for it. I think they are looking towards not just the future, but for the here and now, possibly getting into Europe. So I think this would be a huge positive move. And based on what I'm hearing, it could be up to 20 million pounds that's a significant deal. So we'll see if this ends up happening for Fulham. But again, I like the aggressiveness that Fulham has shown. If you go on the speculation, like I said, only time will tell if this turns out to be real. But I've seen several reports linking Fulham to Sandra Burst. So let's see ultimately what happens with this. And hopefully we'll know more. Tomorrow, well, we will know more by the end of the transfer window on Tuesday. But this is something to uh, keep looking at. And um, hopefully it moves in a positive move and maybe he becomes a signing, which would be fantastic for Fulham Football Club. I've heard nothing but good things about this player. So we shall see. Okay. So now let's talk about some speculation that I'm not so sure of. People are doubting the source, but I'm going to share it anyways. So let's now talk about this because, again, I'm like I said, I'm not I'm not 100% sure, but there has been speculation about Anthony Robinson. So let's talk about that coming from a source, I believe, in Turkey. So let's just talk a little bit about that, that Man City might be interested in Anthony Robinson and that they might be making a bid. Now, I could possibly see this happening because uh, it looks like Cancelo might be going away, so it does make sense. But here's the thing. It makes sense that they might be interested in Anthony Robinson, but from a phone perspective, it makes no sense because unless you have a replacement, I would not sell Anthony Robinson. Again, this is just speculation that has broken in, I'd say, the last four to six hours. So we shall see. I believe the gentleman's name is Ikram Connor. So we shall see if he is right about the speculation. He broke it on Twitter that Manchester City were looking to possibly make a bid for Anthony Robinson. 
I don't see Fulham selling Anthony Robinson. It just makes absolutely no sense for them, at least not right now, maybe in the summer, just not now. Like I said, unless they would have a replacement that was at the level or better, I don't do this because you end up hurting yourself. We have now have seen what a weakened left back looks like for Fulham Football Club. No, no, no. Do not even think about selling Anthony Robinson and leaving them with just Kurzawa. It makes no sense. I, I don't see that. But again, it's out there. That It's the silly season. It's a silly time. We'll see if anything comes of that. also want to mention there is also speculation that Fulham might release Josh Onamon. He'll be a free agent. So if that happens, I wish him the best of luck. I thought that he has helped Fulham over the years and in one season get promoted to the Premier League. So in a way, I'll always have like a, a soft spot for Josh Onama, but he was not a Premier League player. Let's just call it what it is. He just is not at that level. He's a championship player. So it makes sense that Fulham would uh, release him if that is true. If they do give him his releases, all kinds of talk that they will. And if they do, best of luck to Josh Allen. I wish him only the best in the future. And I hope he would then find a new home because uh, he deserves a fresh start. Just like Nathaniel Chalaba, I don't wish either one of them bad. I only wish him the best if they end up leaving Fulham Football Club. Okay, very good. Okay, coming up next to end this show, I'm actually going to talk about the FA Cup. Okay, to end this show of Cottage Talk, actually going to talk a little bit about the FA Cup. The draw just came out, and if Fulham beats Sunderland, they will face Leeds United at Craven Cottage. So I say, let's go for it. Let's go up to the Stadium of Light and beat Sunderland and then face Leeds United at home. I like Fulham's chances at home against Leeds United. I think it would be fantastic. And then we could see how far they can go, honestly. Now, um, I wouldn't say all in, but I'm farther into the FA Cup than I was prior because I could see a path for Fulham. There's a very good path here. So go to the Stadium of Light. Let's see you beat Sunderland and then take on Leeds United. I think that would be a fun run, and it would be a run. So it would be a cup run. So come on, Fulham. Get it done against Sunderland so we can go on a cup run. I think that would be great. So... I think this is a positive draw for Fulham. Now they have to take care of business so they can face Leeds United at home. Okay, very good. All right, we do have some comments. Let's see what people are saying. So Steve Rounds, I believe Steve is talking about the deal for uh, Sasa Lukic. Eight million fee is good business. I agree with you. I totally agree with you. Okay, let's see what Steve Turner has to share. Antonio wants away from West Ham. If he wants to stay in the Prem and in London, maybe a cheeky bid for him and Mitro up top would be immense and a deal. Steve, actually, that actually sounds pretty pretty good. I actually like that idea. I don't know if Fulham would go for it, but I wouldn't be against a last-minute deal for Antonio if uh, Fulham were up for it. That is not a bad idea, my friend. I kind of like that. Okay. Let's see. Let's see what else we got. My friend Val chimes in. They should unload a few more that don't make the bench or only play cup games. Val, I actually agree with you on this. It's funny because if you look at it, Fulham are pretty light right now compared to other teams in the Premier League. Get rid of the players that you're not going to play. Maybe bring in a couple more that you're going to play, honestly, because I don't think that you need excess baggage as you're basically describing here get rid of some players and bring in some more players i'm all for it but you don't have much time to do that so interesting there val all right let's see let's see this is also from steve wood you're my friend andre should have been done now steve i know where you're going with andre i haven't talked about him a great deal he's a player in brazil and uh fulham have been after him for a, a little bit for it looks like about a, a couple of weeks now and he's another central midfielder. Now, the issue with him is that his club don't want to sell. What are you going to do, Steve? What are you going to do? If they don't want to sell, there's not much you can do. You can try, but it takes two to make a deal. And if they're not willing to make a deal, 
I don't blame Fulham on that. I still come back in the summer to try to get this thing done with Andre because obviously they're interested. But I don't agree with it should have been done. Only should have been done, Steve, if his team wanted to sell and they obviously didn't. Value is more important to the team than the money. So I understand that because I'm like that with foam. So I don't blame his club for wanting to hold on to him at least through the summer. I don't blame him. And I think foam went after him. And if they couldn't get him, I think this has more to do with his current club team. I don't blame foam on that. So I disagree that Andre should have been done. Okay. Very good. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of college talk. I hope you're enjoying all the episodes. I can just tell by the amount of people listening and watching that you must be because you keep coming back. So I really appreciate that. We're going to have many more shows coming up. I'm not ending my streak here. I'm going to keep pushing forward, giving you as much content as possible on Fulham Football Club. Like I mentioned, I will have a transfer deadline show tomorrow. So that should be fun. Hopefully we'll have some signings by the time I do it live. That would be great. And I'll be looking back at the last transfer window and asking the question on each player full and sign hit or miss. And that should be fun as well. And I hope you will share your comments live with me. We can have some fun as the transfer window unwinds to its end. Okay. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of cottage talk. Please do as always subscribe on YouTube and Apple podcasts. It does help other phone supporters find us. Well, that's going to do it for me. I'm Russ Goldman. Thank you, as always, for watching and listening to Cottage Talk, now part of the TalkSport Fan Network.